What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made this. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, beefy, amazing, smoked Irish beef and Guinness stew. Coming up. This is some meat. Pat them dry. And what I got here is some beef ribs, bone in. These are beef chuck ribs, I believe. And they said they're select, but that looks pretty good to me. And today we're making an Irish beef and Guinness stew because St. Patty's Day is right around the corner. And typically in a stew like that, you're gonna see chunks of chuck or chunks of brisket or pretty much whatever meat you got. And I think these little beef short ribs are gonna be absolutely fantastic. And normally you'd sear these off in the pan and start the stew out that way, but you know we're gonna throw these on the smoker to get a little color and flavor on them. So first, we need to throw on a rub. And for our rub today I'm going on with some good old-fashioned Chud's barbecue SPG because this is designed for beef and getting a nice bar because it's very pepper heavy. And presentation is really not all that important today because you know this is all gonna be shredded up at the end but still gonna start bone side down and by that I mean up just a nice heavy coating we're gonna adjust the seasoning of the stew at the end but it's always good to start out with a nice flavor base. Flip them over and hit the tops as well. And of course, folks, we're not gonna forget the sides because that would be a rookie move. Just get these coated all over. And those are looking pretty much perfect to me. Let's go ahead and fire up the pit. And on the pit we go. Got the old chud box fired up here. We're gonna go bone side down. And I'm also going to toss in a chunk of post oak, get a little extra of smoky flavor on these. So we're going to rock this pit probably around 300 degrees. It's already been going for about 30 minutes or so, looking pretty good already. Get some good smoke flavor on this and get the cooking process started. But kind of like the Mississippi pot roast I did the other day, these are going to finish in a braise. So that's when they're going to get really nice and tender. So the farther we take them now, the shorter they'll have to braise and the more smoke flavor we get. But really, it's up to you. Next up, into the pot we're gonna go in with some Irish butter, because obviously, and also I always use Irish butter, it's just better. Here we go. Ooh, let that melt down a little bit. And once looking nice and bubbly, in we go with our onion. And I meant to do a rough chop on these, but I totally forgot until I was done. But it should be fine. These will just dissolve into the stew a little bit more. Gonna sweat these down for probably a couple minutes. And once those have cooked down a bit, starting to take on a little bit of color, but looking nice and soft, we're gonna go in with some garlic. Probably not all that garlic, because that's a lot, but I also like garlic a lot, so. Probably a good couple cloves worth. Get that stirred in. We're gonna cook that for just a minute. Does not take long. We don't want it to burn. And then we're gonna go in with some tomato paste. Just a nice couple tablespoons. Let's not open. What do I do? Just a good couple tablespoons and get that toasting in the bottom. Smelling so good already. Love it. Next up, we're gonna go in with a tablespoon or two of some flour. This is just gonna make a bit of a roux with all the butter that's in there, which will help thicken this stew up down the road a little bit. But we do wanna let that toast for another minute or so. Take the raw edge off of both the flour and the tomato paste. And right when everything starts looking real dry and you're worried it's gonna burn, we gotta deglaze this pot with a good old fashioned Guinness beer. This one's Texas themed. Neat. Ooh. And we're gonna go in with the whole thing. Beautiful. And just bring that up to a simmer, deglazing the pot, making sure nothing is sticking or burning to the bottom or the sides. And go in with everything else, including some thyme. Boop. Our celery, which again, I started to dice and then remembered I wanted it chunky. So having both textures will probably be pretty good. Our carrots. A big fat pinch of salt. Probably should have put that in with the onions, but we can always add more later. Some freshly cracked black pepper, but we got plenty on the beef already. And some homemade smoked beef stock. Pulled this out of the freezer this morning. Nice and gelatinous. Ooh, gross. Boop. And bring that up to a simmer. I'm gonna go in with a little water too because that beef stock was super thick and gelatinous, but if you're using regular beef stock, you can just double up. And that is starting to smell really good. I think I'm gonna go in with a little shot of some Worcestershire sauce too while I'm here. Why not? And at this point, we just need to wait until our beef is done, get it in there and let it start simmering away. But first we need to check in on that meat. So it's been probably an hour, maybe a little longer on these. And they are looking really nice. Plumping up, pulling back from the bones. I'm gonna flip these over though, get a little bit of that direct heat flavor on these. 
and let them cook a little bit quicker. Although we could totally pull these out right now. I love mini beef ribs. So cute. We're rocking right around 145 in there. So we'll let these go for probably another, another hour, maybe 30 minutes. Have you had a Guinness since Ireland? I haven't, no. I I've, haven't? I haven't. <laughs> uh, I'm probably gonna be disappointed by this, but... Uh... It's funny, I left Ireland saying that I'm gonna drink a lot more Guinness and I have not had one since. I think we're just gonna be disappointed, like you said, after going to the Guinness factory. Yeah. All right, show me the perfect Guinness pour. Ooh. Oh, look at him go. Back to your bartending roots. Nice. <laughs> Frosty mug, too. Nice. <laughs> Clinkies. It's not bad. American Guinness is good. <laughs> of course it's good. This one's uh, Texas themed too. Yeah, not as good. Don't get me wrong. You probably should eat something weird though. Yeah. All right, what do we got in here? Ooh. Got some canned meats. Mm. Oh, what else is weird? Oh, what is this? Mackerel. Oh, mackerel. Of course it's mackerel. <laughs> I love mackerel. Butcher this. Bauern bratwurst? Farmer sausage. Canned <laughs> meat. Yum. Oh, that's juicy. Oh, <laughs> dude. That's, that's something just, weird. That's gnarly. How are you supposed to eat it? Is it, you put it on toast? It smells like cat food. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep. Let's take a shot of that juice. <laughs> I'll do it. No, don't do it. <laughs> I'm just gonna dump it on the table. Oh, gross. Dude. We're gonna do it. Oh, oh, why? This <laughs> table will never be the same. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look terrible. Let's get some of that board juice. Yeah. I'd eat this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's definitely sausage. I can't think of what sausage. Tuna sausage? No, definitely not Not as bad as the Miss Bong. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a meatloaf sausage. It looks very meatloafy. Here, you try it. All right. Okay. It's like a pork meatloaf. Mm-hmm. Definitely got a hint of like dog food meets <laughs> spam. But that's that's good for me. I like that. Yeah, no, that's actually really good. Canned meat. All right. Pretty weird. Odd pairing with Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> well trimmed pork and coarsely ground beef mixed with natural spices, but there's no beef in the ingredients. <laughs> Who knows? Good. It's good. I think we're actually gonna eat all of this. Yeah, I'm going back for more. And just like that, off the pit we come, and these are looking absolutely beautiful. A lot of good smoky flavor. Again, a little bit of that direct heat flavor, plus some of that smoke from the oak. So now, time to pop them into the stew. This is smelling so good already. So, in we go, bones and all. I think those bones will help fortify the stock even more. I'll have to pick those out when we're serving, though. And we're just gonna let this simmer away for as long as it takes. These are probably around 180 internal, so shouldn't take too long simmering down in this broth until everything is nice and shreddy and nice and tender. So we'll check back in on this in a little bit, but right now it's time to make some mashed potatoes. And just like that, boiled these for about five, 10 minutes and they are nice and soft. So out they come into a bowl. Smells potatoey over here, Bones. Will you put that canned meat away? Jeez, you're on your third tin. And now into this pot, we're gonna go in with a whole bunch of butter. Get that melting down. And once our butter is nice and melted and toasty, I'm gonna go in with some of that garlic we chopped up earlier because I want a garlicky mashed potato. I don't know about you. I do. Okay, I'm gonna put a lot of garlic because I already chopped it. And I'm also gonna throw in some fresh thyme. We're gonna let that steep with that garlic toast away a little bit. Listen to the pop. And then I'll pull those sprigs out once they've given us all their flavor. Oh, that smells good. Beautiful, garlic is getting nice and toasty, so out these come. And now bust out the old potato ricer and we're gonna start ricing these potatoes. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Ooh, beautiful, nice and fluffy. And now all we need to do is fold all this butter in to these potatoes and that garlic will spread around and it's just gonna, we're making mashed potatoes, folks. That's smelling so good. All that garlic got nice and browned a little bit. Ooh, going with a little heavy cream if that's your style. Probably throw a big fat pinch of salt in here. And just keep mixing until it's as buttery and tasty as you want it to be. All right, our pot roast is almost done. Potatoes are done. What's next? Puff pastry? Yeah, when we were in Ireland. By the way, you should check out our Ireland video if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it was served in a bowl with some mashed potatoes, the chives on top, a little parsley on the stew, and a nice little puck of puff pastry. So let's do that. So I got some store-bought puff pastry. I was planning on making it for this video, but I did a test run and I just failed miserably. So I promise one of these days I'll make my own, but 
but not today. It's just so easy and convenient. And now we just need to cut out a shape that we like. I think we're just gonna go right down the middle here. This was about this size. Let's cut these into thirds. Could bust out a ring mold if you wanted a round one. I think I'm just gonna kind of round these off a little bit because that's what I remember theirs looking like. And now onto a sheet tray. Got some parchment paper down. Also put a little grease down just to make sure nothing sticks. Now I'm gonna pop this into the freezer for just a little bit because when it goes into a really hot oven, when it's really cold, the butter releases a lot of steam, which is what gives it a lot of puff. So I'm gonna do that. Now that these are nice and cold, right before they go in, I'm gonna hit them with an egg wash just to give them that extra nice Nice shiny look. Oh yeah. And a little flaky salt on top. Beautiful. Into they go at 425 degrees for probably about 10 minutes or until they're looking nice and golden and nicely puffed up. Looking good. Nice and puffy. All right, time to plate up. We're gonna start out with a nice big mound of our garlicky mashed potatoes. Very garlicky. Boop. Looks like ice cream. They actually use uh, mashed potatoes in ice cream ads. And now we go down with some of this beautiful, super tender beef. I mean, just boop, boop, boop. Look at that. You could poke right through that, but it's still holding together, which is exactly what we're after. And most of these already fell off their bones, except for this one, but it's got such good jiggle factor. Could leave it on there for presentation. I'm probably going to just remove it. Another nice big chunk right in there. Oh, it's so gelatinous. I love it. And we'll throw another chunk right in y'all. I haven't done a good braised short rib in a while, but this is smelling so good. And we'll do another big one right on top. And then lastly, got to go in with some of the juices the gravy and just fill this bad boy up. Trying to get some carrots and celery in there too. Oh, it smells like Guinness. It smells like beef and it's so nice and thick. And to garnish this up, I've got some chives that I'm going to put on top of the mashed potatoes because it's classic. And for the beef, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of parsley. And there it is, folks, looking beautiful. And of course, we can't forget our beautiful little fluffy friend here. And there it is, guys. That is my take on the Irish stew I had in Dublin. Let's dive in. Oh, Are you ready to try my rendition of a slightly more barbecue version of what we had in Ireland? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> this looks delicious. I just got to go for some of that meat. Yep. It is unbelievably tender. Wow. Whoa. That meat is so flavorful. It's so good. It's got such depth to it. Yeah. Mm. All that gelatin's holding it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the meat's super tender. Yeah, you could shred that if you wanted yeah. to. That sauce is just unbelievably thick from all mm. the gelatin in the stock. Also, there is bones from the meat that just fortified <laughs> it even more. Like that is yeah. a thick gravy. Yeah, that is intense. Mm. Gotta go for some taters. Potatoes and gravy. Mm. I really wish it was a little colder today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> very hearty and heartwarming, you know? Yeah. These are cute, huh? Perfect vessel for sopping up some extra <laughs> juice. Boop, boop, boop. Actually gonna... Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Puff pastry sandwich. You're a madman. Oh, for the toaster strudel. <laughs> yeah. Mmm. That was so good. Mmm. Dude, those carrots are so soft, too. Mmm. Mmm. So good. The oh. Guinness comes through slightly. It does. Get like that toasted malt flavor in it. Mm -hmm. That is really good. Yep. This is gonna put me to sleep. Yeah. And I'm okay with it. What a world we live in where people will watch a video online of two dudes sharing a bowl of stew. <laughs> <laughs> now, the real question is, do you remember the restaurant we went to that oh. inspired this? Not at all. Lemon something, I don't know. We'll have to look. <laughs> I mean, we could just watch the video. I'm sure we yeah. see it. We looked it up. It's called the Hairy Lemon. <laughs> Awful name. It's great, yeah. <laughs> it was a nice traditional Irish pub though, I'm assuming. It was really cool. <laughs> it was great. All right, hear me out. Mm -hmm. Miller Lite stew. <laughs> Coming up! Cheers, buddy. Cheers. That's really good. That is really good. It's really smooth. Clearly we like it. <laughs> Shout out Dave, my buddy Dave from Wilson's Barbecue here on YouTube. Picked this up for me last time he came to visit. He's actually coming to visit us again in a couple of weeks, so. Oh yeah. I think we'll have to. <laughs> Take a hint, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and with this very last super tender, squishy bite of meat, I think it's time for the official taste test. God, that is so tender. <laughs> All right, y'all, and that is it. That's how to make an absolutely incredible smoky Guinness stew or Guinness pie or whatever you want to call this. I highly recommend giving this one a try because something tells me you haven't made a really good beef stew in a very long time. And I think they're quite underrated. And this one is definitely the best one that I've ever had. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, Please go cook something outside. Peace.